Now, all we're going to do to finish out this section is to look at some basic, basic graphing techniques. And this is, all it is is using a t-table to plug in values. That means if I were to give you something that looks like this, y equals 2x plus 3. From experiences that we've had from 0308 and 0310, we know what we're supposed to do with this guy. We know all different kinds of ways to graph this. But what they want you to do in this particular section is to pick values of x or y or whatever and fill this out. You want to start with things that are your intercepts. Those are always the good ones. Plugging in x is equal to 0 is always good. <coughs> if x is 0, what is y? 3. If x is 1, plug in 1 here. What do you get? Four. If x is 2, what do you get? You get 7. Remember, you're just doing 2 times 1 plus 3, 2 times 2 plus 3, and that's how you get the 5 and the 7. That's all they want you to do. And when you plot these guys, it should give you an idea about the, what the graph should look like. You should know, though, that this guy is, what adjective would you use to describe this guy? Linear. Linear, which means his graph is a line. line. So let's see, 0, 3 is right there. 1, 5 is right here, and then 2, 7 is right here. Do you think it's going to continue on in that same pattern all the way across? Yeah. Yeah. And if you're not sure, you can pick other values like negative 1 and negative 2. But you will see that it all matches up. And I'm actually going to, well, oh well. You know, you, the slope is 2 over 1, right? Because we talked about slope. Let's use that slope to continue getting other points. Remember that fancy word? What do we just do? Extrapolate. So that's what my graph should look like. It's just a line. How can you verify this guy? Use a graphing calculator. Okay. So there's not really much to <coughs> this one. Now the next one is a little bit it's a little bit different. But I'm just kind of going off of how the book has these guys laid out. Later on, we're going to see how we graph things that are much more complicated and actually a lot more fun, too. You don't really want fun. I want boring. You can't square both sides. You can't change this guy because if you do, it's not going to have the same meaning. You, you, you could, but the way they want you to have the setup is a little bit different. Here, notice how x is by itself, right? So maybe instead of plugging in x values, maybe I should plug in y values. If I try to plug in y as 0, what is x? Well, that's not very pretty, is it? What are y values that you could plug into this guy that will be nice once I work out the radicand and I have to have the square root? Square, so 2, 2, two negative 2. Oh, wait, negative 2. Why negative 2? Could be 0. Negative 2 plus 2 is 0, and the square root of that is 0. You said 2. 7. 2 plus 2 is 4. The square root of 4 is 2. How about negative 1? I heard you say, what did you say, 7? Seven? Seven. If I plug in 7 plus 2 is 9, square root of 9 is 3. Now I'm going to stop here because I'm going to start running out of room in terms of what I have here on my graphing window. I tell you right now, I'm not going to graph square root of negative 2, 0. No, the square root of negative 2, did I say square root of negative 2? I can't even talk today. Do you know what the square root of 2 is? Just let it go. The square root of 2 is about 1.414. So let's plot the easy guys. 0, negative 2. I hope it didn't record that. 0, negative 2. I've got 2, 2. We've got 1, negative 1. And the last guy that fits on here is 3, 7. And this is all that I have.
Remember when we graphed square root functions, didn't we say they look like half of a parabola laying on its side? Since this is x by itself, the orientation is different, and so it does look like half a parabola, except it just straight up looks like half a parabola. If you had squared both sides like you were trying to do before, Doug, you would have gotten something that would have been a parabola. But that's not what we have here. <coughs> All we have is this. It stops right here. Because what if you try to have x is negative 1? Does negative 1 equal the square root of this guy? No, it's not valid. You would never get a negative out of this guy. So this is all you have for that particular graph. 